how I started. Right, I left school on the Friday, uh, the 26th of March, 1949. I started here on the Monday, the 29th of March, at Presley Colliery. I had set off down Mansfield with my mate, Peter Waffle, and uh, my dad had said to me here on the ice before, and he says, uh, don't get going up, oh, where you going? I said, I'm going for a job, Dad. He said, well, don't get go going up that bloody pit lane, as we called it. And, uh, but when we got to, to Mansfield, there were no jobs available, because the labour exchange were at Mansfield. And the woman, she says, uh, if you want to go to the pit, there's only Presley signing on, and you'll be all right there, because you both live at New Austin, you know, so we both come up pit lane here, Saturday morning. Anyway, we get down to Jim Allison, he was the training officer at the time, and Jim Smith was safety officer, and he interviewed us. And uh, then they took us up to the signs zone. And uh, I, I always remember Bill Aikman, he was doing signing on, supervising signing on, he was at wages office, time office, and that. He says, these are posh names, Dennis Jason and Peter Jesswin, that were my mate's name. Anyway, we went up to Baths and uh, if we opened the door like they were going to show us his locker. There's, there's a, a man's leg on, on one door and I later, later found out he was Arthur Bullman, he was a lamp cabin man and he'd been trapped in pit, lost a leg and this was a false one. And two or three before we go up to the uh, up to the bath attendant's office, there were an arm on the door. That was Harry Simpson's false arm. Uh, he got trapped in bed. His son Colin, a very good friend of mine, he uh, he finished up as night of a man, now a day of a man, senior of a man. Yeah, some years. And and we we got a bloke back on the door on his the back. Clary Downs that was paddy driver. And anyway we went in and the uh, into the bath attendants to give us a locker. Uh, number ten ninety two mine. I had that all the years I was here, that one locker. And uh, a soap tray and a block of soap. And you had to sign on and buy that badge. I think it was you got your deductions were a penny for the welfare. Presley Miners Welfare and, and uh, tokens for the baths and perhaps a penny for your soap and, and that were your deduction, your total deductions at, at that time and anyway then you'd got to go round to the stores for a pair of pit boots and uh, of course we were, I was stopping off pit top, Pete were going underground so he had to get a, he had to get a, a pit helmet and I was in the cutty shop, which was just round back here, uh, working for Jim Chapel. I was a fat lad cleaning all parts of machinery and paraffin and, and uh, fetching oil and fetching tea from canteen when they were at 11 o'clock knock-off. The billy cans, you know, and a couple of mashing of tea. They didn't have tea bags in them days. And uh, and then you'd, you'd bring it back and, and they'd... Uh, They'd have the snap. It was snap time was about 11 o'clock, well, 20 past then. Never finished on time. You always went to about half past, something like that. But uh, I was in on pit top here for about just over a year, working in Jim's place, and Jim Chapel's place, cut a shop. He was a great man, Jim Chapel. He, he'd, uh, he could memorise every nut and bolt size and what pit bin it was in in the stores. And of course, at that time of day, you had to open, you had to fill a application form, a withdrawal form for bolts. And, and he used to say to me when I used to fetch him, uh, "When you get down there, if you don't know what bin it's in, it's in bin one, two, stroke three, you know." And, and he knew everything about it. Anyway, <clears throat> after about thirteen, fourteen months, I went underground into pit bottom. And uh, working with my, my uh, distant relative, T uh, Teddy Fretwell, and we worked at Pit Bottom on dogging tubs and, and, and on drop chair that were empty side. The man that was uh, 
more or less the onset to the man that, that, that pushed it for coal going out, you know. Uh, made sure he didn't lose any time and that. There was, uh, it was Harold Wilkinson, a local man, uh, a Mansfield man. He was a, a bred budgies and he was a judge of budgeries and canaries. And another uh, on the top deck was uh, Harold Bennett. He, he were uh, they were a good man as well. They were all, and at that time you used to call them Mister. You know, you, you even called your, your next door neighbours, Mama, Mister Gill and Mister Bickley. And I'd have got a good thing going. I used to knock them up half crown a week. The boat named Doug Simpson, who laid, Doug uh, Elliot, who laid to become one of the best chargemen we've ever had here. Donny Marson, Tommy Marriott. You know, I used to make me about twelve and six a week. I only used to get six and eight pence a day, a shift, two pounds, six and eleven a week after stoppages. I always remember it. And uh, of course we, we, we then went pony driving. And then when you got to, I was only seventeen and a half, my dad was off work with a broken leg. He broke it on cold face and uh, Jake Gregory, who was the senior of a man, whose job I took in later years. Brilliant man, Jake. <clears throat> he, he says, right, you're going on face. I says, you can't send me on face. I'm only 17 and a half. He says, but time you've done your training, you'll be 18. So I had to go on nights. And uh, cutting. I mean, cutting team. I worked with Les Barlow and Bob Waterfall and Jack Godson. Jack died in pit here. Uh, he died on, on one. I had to bring him out one morning. On Saturday morning he died, and uh, we eventually got into the coalface, and Albert Ty were chargemen. Good bloke, Albert Ty, they used to call him fat. But the deputy at the time was a bloke named Albert Shotball, who later became Overman. And Albert was superintendent of Amherst Brigade, and he could recite the Amherst booklet back to front. You know, wherever name him a page and he recited. He was a brilliant man, and he, him and Jake between them, I should say, think more or less, brought me through my career in mining. You know, and Jake says to me, "Why don't you go in there, uh, join Shot in? You used to call him Shot, oh, but Shot uh, in Elmer's Brigade in 1956 when I went." Shot says to me, you want to go to night school, you and get a, a job, shot firing. So I went to night school, me and a boat named Jack Warner, from the village as well. Uh, we went to night school, Freddie Woodland, he's he, both dead and gone now. And we went to night school on a Friday night and then we, we sat his exam and we passed. Uh, Jack and I went on staff. It was the 28th of June 1958. My daughter was born on the 19th of June 1958, so I know uh, these. Anyway, I was only deputy. I was shot firing about 18 months, and they made me a deputy. And uh, I don't know whether it was uh, because of the amount of work I put in and uh, whatever, and somebody must have thought someone told me. Anyway, they made me a deputy. And then I was only a deputy about three years, and I was made a, what at that time, grade three overman. That was a face overman. They brought it in years later as a face manager. I don't know whether you come across face managers. Anyway, uh, say I joined the Amherst Brigade and, and then I went to Nottingham uh, St. University and took the only manager's ticket, and then I got other man's job, and then I'll, I'll promote the senior other man. When Jake left, I was senior other man 22 years. And uh, this pit, North Pit, that closed up, I had all those facing North Pit, which was first and second water, those seams, Dunsell and Topard, that was in the North Pit, but the Topard finished around about 1956 ish, something like that. And in this time, there was all big alterations being made on pit top here. 
from 1949 to 56 it took them to the, the length of the shaft 50 metres and then they brought the mine cars in instead of these little tubs we used to have because we used to have four decks on the chair, two tubs on each two, uh, four, eight empties and eight full and uh, you know and a balance rope in between <coughs> Excuse me, that's a legacy, dust. Anyway, uh, we, we we got going and, and, and I went to work with Teddy Frettle. As, as I worked in Pit Bottom, we went on face together. We played football together for New Ufton Villa. There's various photographs of New Ufton Villa and, and Leslie Impsint in the... Uh, cabinets here. <coughs> From then on, uh, well, I got married in uh, 27th of March, tomorrow, my wedding anniversary. Uh, 19, what? 54, 1954, 61 years I've done. You don't get rid of that for murder, do you? Anyway, we went, we, we carried on there and then in uh, 6th of, May, uh, 6th of May 1970, the North Pit shut as regards coal turning. Still open for air because air had to go through and go through to Sharbrook to depart and then through to Sharbrook along with the gas. Uh, Sharbrook Collar, which is about three and a half mile on pit top distance, about ten mile underground for you know narrow channels and God knows what. And, uh, a lot of lads went to, they went to uh, Warsaw, Sherwood, Langworth, Shirebrook and uh, then in 1983, Christmas 83, I was transferred to Shirebrook when we'd done coaling in Depard. Because Depard, we went, we got both seams come together, Depard and Piper. And the total extraction there was, was uh, 10 foot. We got some huge chucks. Uh, and the, the machine was an AM500, a huge machine. And I went to Charlotte for the last three years, Just and then Strike came. And then we started back after Strike, and then uh, uh, I went to Canada, and as I come back, Union man's ringing me and says, are you going to come down and, and sign on to finish? And uh, I says, I'm not old enough to finish. He says, yeah, Whitwell's finishing. And they want to put their officials somewhere, so we're getting rid of our Odins. He says, and you'll be not staff longest. So he says, we're getting rid of you all. I says, all right, thank you. And that was me. 26th of uh, July, 1986, I finished. So that's more or less my career as a gaz from starting to finishing.